Hello everybody, welcome to the Comic Gamer Movie Show. My name is Deshaun, and today I'm here to give you my review of Captain Marvel. Sorry about the setup, uh, I'm doing the best I can at the moment, doing the best I can at the moment, but um, I kind of got something in my throat, so sorry if I sound kind of um <clears throat> like my voice is a little low, but this trailer was fucking cool now i will be i'll be the first to tell you right here and now um if i'm being totally a thousand percent honest if i'm being totally a thousand percent honest it was a trailer that um hold up sorry i gotta move something all right it was a trailer that uh, that for lack of a better term it was with the Doctor Strange, the Spider-Man Homecoming kind of trailers, kind of trailers, where these trailers are good trailers, they set up everything, they're not these huge, grandiose trailers, like, like, you know, because if you go back and look at the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer, and even the, um, the first Doctor Strange trailer, and then um, even when I think back to the Guardians 2 trailer, and even some of those trailers, all I can remember vividly is people not turning on those trailers, but people kind of being like, I guess, like, mixed. And uh, I've seen a lot of that with the Captain Marvel trailer. Me, personally, I I enjoyed the shit out of it. I thought if I had to give it a 1 out of 10, I'd have given it from 1 to 10, I would have given it an 8. It's not the best Marvel trailer. It's not with the when, it's not with the Captain America Civil War or the Infinity Wars or the Black Panther trailers. It's not with, um, it's not even with, um, the Dark Knight. I mean, not Dark Knight, um, Batman BVS trailers. It's not with the Exelon of the best, you know, oh my gosh, I'm over the moon for this. But I am hyped for this. But that's, you know... But I think um, these trailers really hit, and I've been on YouTube, like, looking up different people's reactions, different people's, you know, perspective on this trailer, and um, I've pretty much come to the conclusion that it all depends on what, it all depends on what you're, um, on, it all depends on what you're looking for, because I've literally, it all depends on if you're a comic book fan or not, because Generally speaking, the people who didn't very like like the trailer or love the trailer are not comic book guys. And, and like I've literally seen that. Like literally, there's this interesting divide going on here because all the people who are comic book guys are like, "This was awesome," and all the people who aren't comic book guys are like, "It was this was fun." I hope or either like I don't get it, I don't see it, or this is fun, but we'll see. Like literally, there's this interesting little divide. There's this interesting thing going on with that but personally i enjoyed it um it it, it uh, uh, like i said i can't really get too much into new stuff because the trailer is just confirming what my if you really want to see what I, my thoughts on that trailer because it's pretty much an extended version of that first trailer i already know like everyone else is all confused about what's going on me personally i don't see anything confusing at all about it i already know what this is about I can see what it's about. When Kevin Feige said that this would be a story that's a little different than your typical, you know, story, I suppose he, I, I understood what he meant. He means that, like, because the way this trailer set it up, which is pretty clear, is that the Kree, like, um, the Kree come down, like, not the Kree, yeah, the Kree come down to Earth because they, for some reason, maybe they're gonna go, maybe in the, they're gonna go with the comic book reason, I'm not gonna tell you the comic book reason, because that might be a spoiler, but the Kree didn't come down to Earth, Carol's working in the Air Force, she confronts this weird spacecraft, shoots it down, gets in a dogfight with it, shoots it down, her plane goes down, her, her shit goes down too, goes down too, she goes all, um, Independence Day and tries to confront the alien on foot, and something blows up and screws with her, and screws with her atoms, and screws with their atoms, and then they kidnap her. They kidnap her. They stable. They kidnap her. They stabilize her. They change her around, and they turn her into a living weapon for the Kree Empire. They turn her into a living weapon for the Kree Empire. They erase her memory. They replace it. They, re they erase her memory. They tell her what what who she is. They tell her that they saved her. They make her into their weapon in this big great war. They make her, I'm sorry, sorry about the noise, there's people cutting stuff in the background, and there's stuff going on, very low budget here, but like, they cut, they, but they get, they do that, they, so they get rid of all, so they, um, 
So they get rid so they um kidnap her, they brainwash her, they put these memories in. And from what I can tell, it's probably gonna be something along the line. And then, and then there's this great line by who who looks to me like she's either an elder or she is the supreme intelligence. Now, if you wonder who the supreme intelligence is in the comic books, the Kree Empire is ruled by this giant head and a bowl and a giant tank called the supreme intelligence it's this freaky looking head and the supreme intelligence is literally all the greatest minds in the Kree empire fused together to create this creature and literally if you become a great mind in the Kree empire you're gonna get your brain thrown like one of the highest honors you can have is to become a part of the supreme intelligence so basically one of the greatest honors you can have is to literally be fused with this giant brain, essentially. And there's no way they can't have it in there. That visual of this giant head and a tank, there's no way they can't have that. And my best bet is that this woman who's talking to Kurt, um, Carol and telling her, you know, we made you bit, we made you stronger, live longer. First of all, that answers the question of why she hasn't aged, because she ages slower, because she ages like a Cree. They're going to age longer, live like you age longer, you're far, but you're superior. That was the big point, and I thought that was kind of cool as it cuts to her with a mohawk, shoot, blasting two guys. Superior. And I am hyped. I am hyped. Ooh. But, man, I will say, but not to get into too much, but the entire story is going to be about her finding herself, finding who she really is, figuring out who she really is, figuring out what, the lies, you know, finding out. And at the beginning, she talks about how Kree's are, um, are noble warrior heroes. And it's like, no. That's not what you are, and um, it's gonna that's gonna be the whole character arc for her. She's gonna start off thinking that the Kree are the good guys, the noble warrior heroes. By the end of the movie, she's gonna realize, wow, there is the only people who there is no good guys. There's literally three things going on, and I think that's pretty cool because it's not it's not very linear because there are no bad guys, really. The, 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 like there there are bad guys, but the bad guys are literally. <laughs> The good guys and the good like it doesn't mean that the scroll are good, but it doesn't mean that the Cree are but the Cree are also bad. It's both. It is both put together and she's gonna choose Earth over this entire war. And my thinking is that the Cree scroll war scratched so far that she's been basically flying around taking care of the entire thing. Because there's that's the only explanation for why she's been gone for so long. Um but good lord, I will just end it with this though. The final about 10 seconds of this was not only like people have also said Dragon Ball Z level awesome, but it was straight up. And I mean straight up. It was badass. Like, I literally, because like Kevin Feige kept saying, she is the strongest hero in the Avengers. She's the strongest hero we're introducing. She's the strongest hero we're introducing. I'm just like, Okay, sure, she's the strongest hero you're introducing. Like, I mean, maybe she'll be strong as. Maybe she'll be relatively strong. Man, she really is the strongest hero they've ever introduced. Like, it really caught me off guard. Like, looking at her, like, she's the strongest hero they've ever introduced. She is taking out an armada of spaceships by herself, flying in a vacuum of space without a helmet. Well, she has a helmet, but, like, there's no breathing mass. She's just flying in a vacuum of space, taking out an entire armada of spaceships like it ain't shit. And I'm just like, yo, man. And you get the feeling that that's just a glimpse of how powerful she is. You get the feeling she's just tapping into it. I literally had, like, my only biggest problem with this movie, sphere with this movie now is how do you make people relate to a character that powerful? She's Superman level powerful. I mean, she's man of steel, Superman level powerful, man. Like she is really powerful. And I'm just like, yo. Now granted, um, granted, unlike Superman, they can get away. Sorry. Sorry. Unlike Superman, they can kind of get away with this because she's a space-based hero. So like literally she can just literally she can be as powerful as she wants to because she's in outer space. So it, so it almost doesn't even matter that she's this powerful because there's a whole bunch of crazy shit in space. So you don't even have to bring her to Earth really all that often. You can just bring her to Earth to save she, she does in the comics. You know, she, she, she comes to Earth to save people. But, you know, she spends most of her time in outer space. You know, sometimes she might spend some time on Earth, but she spends grand majority of her time in space. So that's how they can get around it, really. If you want to be real technical, now that I think about it and just hit me now, the way they get around her being that powerful, 
is, well, yeah, she's powerful relative to everyone you met, but in the outer space, and you know, in space, but they're going to just basically, that's what they're going to do. They're going to be like, in space, she's powerful relative to who you've met. <laughs> like, that's what Marvel's going to start doing. They start playing with power levels because I thought Thor and Doctor Strange were the most powerful beings I've ever, I, in Infinity War, convinced me that Thor and Doctor Strange are just on another fucking level than everybody else. Like, I know people are going to wind up, but I'm like, yeah, Wanda can just move stuff. Okay, Doctor Strange can do all kinds of spells. Thor could wreck shop by himself. He can literally win that war by himself. So, it's crazy, man. It is crazy to think. But, man, I can't wait for this Avengers. I hope that Avengers trailers come out. I can't wait for Avengers 4. I can't wait for Captain Marvel. I'm excited for Captain Marvel. I can't wait to see her powers being fully used. And I can't wait for people to finally see this movie and realize that um that they're not seeing the big picture. Because I've seen a lot of people confused. I see a lot of people thinking it's this. And I'm like, but it's not. And I've seen people come at this movie and say, oh, it's just a generic. I'm like, yeah, because some because a woman pilot who worked her ass off to get to her position as a pilot gets kidnapped by an alien race juiced up with their DNA, turned into a turned into a walking nuclear weapon, essentially. A walking nuclear weapon. Brainwashed into thinking that she is actually Kree. Not only is she Kree, but that they are the good guys. Goes to Earth in pursuit of these of these shape shifting of these shape shifting creatures who are the, who have they've been raging a who they've been raging a long ass war with, and she goes to Earth and realizes that something's wrong. All these people look like me. Something's raw off, and then memories start to come back and realize that her life is her entire life is a lie that they've been lying to her from day one. That the Kree are the bad guys and that the Scroll are the bad guys. That, that does not sound. That sounds like a. That sounds like a very interesting movie to me. I don't know. Like maybe I'm just wearing the folders. I mean, you can tell me if I'm wearing the folders. I mean, maybe I'm wearing the folders. But to me personally, I'm like, that's a lot of twists and turns, and the Kree and the. Then you got the shape-shifting aspect going on in there you got the aspect of you know this movie is going to end on a weird strange note because she's not around anymore you wonder like where she went off to how long did this Kree scroll roller been going on the fact that she's working for the bad guys to stop other bad guys and like she's caught in the middle of those two bad guys and you know they're going to make you light and you know they're going to make you and i feel like the trailer is holding back i will say that I feel like the trailer is holding back because there are sequences that are like cut short that I'm like, I bet you that sequence is a lot funnier. And there are sequences that cut short that I'm like, I bet you that sequence is a lot more badass. Like, they're not showing a lot of Star Force. They're not showing a lot of Ronin. They're not showing a lot of Jude Law. And you know those guys are in the movie a lot. They're they're not showing, they didn't, they're not showing any Coulson. Like, they really are keeping whatever, like, they really want to keep the, I don't know if like the MCU got like, um, I feel like Marvel got like, kind of ticked off about people talking about them spoiling things they kind of just took a huge step back and said we're not gonna spoil a damn thing because they're not spoiling anything and like because like, like, like i said they didn't show a lot of those things and all they showed was her powers but i'm pretty 90 percent sure that that scene is just a tiny sample of what you're gonna see and I'm, I'm excited for it i can't wait to see it but you know it's it's just, the movie already got my money it, it already has my money i'm gonna see captain marvel march it's done you know march 14th i'm getting i'm gonna go see it but everyone else, I'm not so sure about. Now, granted, when I went and looked at the Captain Marvel trailers, you know, views, it had like 8 million views in a day and when I, in less than 24 hours. And when I went to go see the Captain Marvel first trailer, it had more views than Black Panther and Aquaman. And it had more views than most of all the Marvel trailers. I was like, it's such a weird thing going on with this Captain Marvel movie because it's one of the most viewed trailers. So people are interested in this movie. I mean, we'll find out when the pre-sales go up, but I don't know. We, you know, I, I'm already excited for the movie. I was going to see the movie anyways. So for me, this is just a drop in the hat. It's just confirmation of things that I already kind of pieced together. See, but see, but the, the big takeaway is she is the most powerful being in Marvel Universe. She is the most powerful um, hero ever introduced in the Marvel Universe. There's no doubt about that anymore. There's no doubt about that. I see it. I'm like, yep, yep. Mm -mm -mm, you were not kidding. So thank you for joining me on the Comic Game Movie Show. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen.